let's talk about data transformation options in Fabric. When you're working with data, you will probably need to do some data transformation to get the data into a state that you can really work with it. And in Microsoft Fabric, you have different options to transform your data. You can use data flows and people with a Power BI background probably recognize them. This is really low code, no code experience. You can use notebooks and you can of course use T-SQL and also if you're working with real-time data, KQL. So which one should you use and when? In this video, I will try to explain that. And as always, I'm recording this video. Reitzer, he writes blogs about it. If you prefer reading and looking at this screenshot step by step, make sure to have a look at his blog. I will put the link in the description. Let's start with Dataflow Gen 2. Everyone that has some Power BI experience probably knows about Dataflows. They are this really easy, no code, low code experience. And I will show you an example here. What you see is you can just drag and drop these building blocks and transform data in a way that works best for you. And you could even click on different parts of these building blocks and then you see in the preview picture what you just had done and what the effect was. So for me, I love Power BI. This works amazing because I like this drag and drop approach. I like this no code approach, really visual. And at least for me, these building blocks, they feel kind of self-explanatory. But of course, the problem with these data flows is there are some limitations. If you have really complex data transformation that you want to do, these building blocks may get to a limit where they can't do what you want to achieve anymore and that you really need to write the code. Another option for data transformation are notebooks. Notebooks are more for like advanced users, like data scientists and data engineers that are really comfortable with coding. You can use different languages in a notebook like PySpark, Spark, Spark SQL, Spark R. You can run Python scripts in there. You can do a lot of advanced data engineering in there as long as you know how to write the code. So for example, a use case for this would be machine learning. You can use Python libraries for tasks like building machine learning models directly within the notebook. So if you see these two methods next to each other, quite a difference. We have this data flows gen two, which are no code, low code, drag and drop. And then we have these notebooks where you actually write the code yourself. And then we have T-SQL. Well, T-SQL works best for data professionals familiar with SQL and you need fast transactional data transformations. And what would be use case here? Running complex queries and stored procedures inside a warehouse or a SQL database. So for example, if you want to transform structured data before sending it to Power BI. And before I recorded this video, I looked into the official Microsoft documentation about this topic and they mentioned Dataflow Gen 2, T-SQL and notebooks. But something else that I think is important here to mention too is the event house for the real-time data, the streaming data, where you actually transform data using KQL. And if you are familiar with SQL and you look at KQL, you will see some similarities and KQL is really the option for your streaming data and real-time data. So each of these options has its strengths. The data Data flows, they are really easy track and drop for fast uh, ETL processes. The notebooks where you can handle complex data and data engineering. And T-SQL is perfect for structure transformations and of course KQL for streaming data. So choosing the right tool does not only depend on your data, but also on the skills of your team. Like if you work with a lot of Power BI developers and they probably are going to use Dataflows Gen 2. And if you work with data scientists implementing these machine learning models, probably some notebooks will be there. 